Hello, in this video I just want to do a comparison between the Blutes and Patient action, which is the one on the right here, and the standard roller lever action, which is in most pianos. It has a lever here, and uh, that's why we call it a roller or lever action. The roller is this thing here, so lever action, and uh, that's in most pianos. And we've got a, a, a mock string set up here with a damper, which we don't have on this one. So I'll be quite brief, I just want to show some of the aspects to, of it. Um, there's an increasing interest in Blutner Browns. We found as uh, someone's just retired from making film music and uh, he's given all his electronic stuff to his son and got a Blutner patent action gran from us. And every time I contact him, he says, I just love my piano. I think he loves the real acoustic piano. And Blutner have such a wonderful sound. I won't uh, be playing any Blutners today, but there's plenty of videos to show and illustrate that. But just looking at the patient action, and we also have a concert pianist who's thinking about having one of these at home and wonders whether it's gonna feel too different from the concert pianos that he's playing. Um, he's a young concert pianist and trying to make that decision. Well, that's known for as a repetition lever and therefore repeats really well. But I find the control is very similar on both. And that's why Blutner stayed with this action until about 1925 before they moved to the roller action, presumably um, economical reasons. Uh, this is very, very different. As you can see, the design looks so different. Uh, so let's look at some aspects of it very briefly indeed. First of all, the key dip is nine millimeters officially, but because key dip on, key on electronic uh, digital pianos and n n most acoustic pianos is, is 10 or 10.5 or 11, we tend to put, set it deeper, which Blutners seem to do themselves when they restore them themselves, the ones that we've got that have been restored by Blutners. We're, we're being helped here by someone who worked for, uh, I think about 10 years for Blutners in Perryvale, London, and now he's self-employed and works on a lot of Blutners. Uh, just watching that, uh, as I press, the, press this down, you see the jack pulling out here. The jack pulls out in reverse, the set off is in reverse. If we look at the standard action here, it set off is at the front, so it's facing forwards, and this one is facing backwards, and which is so that gives it a much smoother feel. This tends to feel more notchy. You can actually feel when you engage the set off and it pulls off the roller, and also it's got a roller mechanism that makes it feel different as well. So this one pulls out so smoothly you hardly feel it. Um, so that's one reason I think that so many people were in love with the Blutner feel and uh, it does indeed feel wonderful. Um, the the up weight is much greater, by the way. We talked about up weight, but I won't go on about that because I've talked about that so up weight and down weight uh, in other videos and why it's very different feel. So we see, see this spring holding it up. Now here, there's a spring which you adjust here. There's a screw there. This is a Beckstein style rather than a Steinway style, which has a more difficult spring adjustment mechanism, though you can get used to it. This is, uh, you can, get, in a way, it's easier to get more gradations on the spring adjustment here. Um, but you can get them on Steinways, obviously. But um, I'm going to show you some of the regulation on this piano. Um, first of all, the spring itself is really important. Don't try and bend the L, don't take it out and try and bend this L, because it can break. Um, the correct way of doing it is to pull it backwards if you want to strengthen it and push it in if you want to weaken it and it should be just so that it checks nicely and then it, as I lift the key it lifts up slightly if it's you might not get it lifting up but it stands still uh, is good enough might this hinge by the way you might need to lubricate that uh, before that might be affecting the fact that it doesn't really lift up uh, don't expect to always get it lifting up as long as they don't go downwards um, if the springs not not working at all uh, if it's pressed, if it's too weak as well, let's just show, see what happens. So we release this and the jack doesn't really want to go under. It's pushed under obviously by this spring and that little spring, which should be about three millimeters away apparently. Um, but it's not really going under properly. So that's why it's really important. And if you've brute, brute the ground, it, if it does fail, it's usually this. And they're just as reliable, by the way, as the standard action. We've no, I've not noticed any difference in terms of reliability. It's really important, I think, that we get encouraged to be familiar with, with this action, which is such a favorite of so many people. Um, so there we are, you can see the spring pulling it up, and that's correctly regulated. Just going to look at the set-off as well. So the set-off's regulated at the back of the action, as you can see, and it's, you turn it backwards and forwards. It's very, very common, we find Blue de Grands, where they're setting off far too early, 
um, and the action is very forgiving but the hammer's not really get enough power it just sets off too early so it's really important to get the set off so the hammer gets as close to the string same as same as with the standard one really it gets close to the string you can see this, wh where the string is there so it gets close to it close as possible but must have a margin of error so that uh, it doesn't end up staying on the string um, so this one's exactly the same you get as close as you can and um, and it sets off and you will often find that you have to take these up on boot the grands so that's very very common there's lots of other things about regulation uh, that i i'm trying to show bits on each video about, about blue and the grands but uh, setting up the action in the first place um, is really important well there's other videos about that um, so i just wanted to show the main things just contrast it with an upright in terms of repetition you can see this one these you need to keep bring the key much further up unless it's got a spring like some becksteins have got that push it back under and some other makes too and then for it could on their one two three have got something that tries to help the repetition um, but the repetition on upright isn't as good as a, a, a standard grand and but i think on this one it's almost the same as the standard grand uh, so if you're a technician please do comment um, i hope that's been helpful and so there's lots of aspects i haven't looked at here and uh, i've looked tried to look at them on other videos as well thank you very much for listening